Great. And I will Sign send you the link uh, as soon as we're, we're probably is live on YouTube right now. So if you're joining us through YouTube, welcome. Can I just say something really quick? We are on YouTube now. So there we go. And I'll post you the link right here in Zoom. Here's the YouTube link to everybody where we're at. We currently have uh, one person watching now, which I think is me. Um, and now David Johnson is here. All right, David. Uh, thank you, Ted. Uh, what's up, Emiliana? Yeah, so as you all know, Super Bowl is set. Woohoo! And yeah, Tom Brady, 10 year, 10th Super Bowl. It's going to stop right. But anyway, I really sense. I don't know about I, the Super Bowl. What? Is there a Super Bowl? It's, it's Tampa Bay versus Kansas City Chiefs. Tom Brady's still playing? And Tampa Bay. That's right. It's his 10th Super Bowl. Haven't you had enough? No, not yet. <laughs> I thought he retired last year. Yeah, no, he just left the Bills. That's all. Or the, the Patriots, yeah. So wow. here's the deal. So I, I and I learned this from Doug Addison, and I, you know, a lot of this, this is, and I, I just, I like to look for the Lord in everything. I, I really do. And as soon as I learned that Kansas City won, I'm like, didn't they win? Didn't they? They lost last year, right? Didn't they? Didn't they I think they lost last year. Well, okay. Nevertheless, I think Ted and I, you and I talked a little bit about being more prayerful, or maybe that was me and Ernie. But I really feel like the Chiefs are going to win, and here's why. Because it's Kansas City, Missouri because that's where Arrowhead Stadium is. Um, and also in Kansas City, Missouri, the International House of Prayer. And Mike Bickle has been feeding that for, I think, at they, least they, they 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 won last year. They won last year. Okay. I still feel like they're going to win again this year because I think the Lord is trying to say, you need to keep praying. I, I've, that's... What do you mean like that? Um, um, anyway, uh, I feel like the Lord is just tr is trying to put emphasis on you need to pray. You need to be, it needs to be at the center. And I just, and I feel like there's going to be, there's going to be something that will happen at the game that will point to the Lord, that will point to prayer, something. Um, uh, I know that I've, uh, Doug Addison has interpreted, for example, that one Super Bowl in New Orleans where the lights went out. And he saw the Lord all over it, up to and including Bible verses. So I really feel like something's going to happen at the Super Bowl that will point to prayer. That will, um, uh, that will, the Lord wants to speak to us. And, you know, let's be honest, a lot of Americans are going to watch that game. So um, I think we need to pay extra special attention because there's going to be a prophetic message in there somewhere. But I also feel like the Chiefs are going to win just because I could be wrong. I don't usually make predictions. I just don't. But I, as soon as I learned it, I, I, I sensed that immediately. So just throwing that out there with the caveat, I could be wrong. But I see Jesus in everything. Okay, thank you. Thanks, David. So um, you made a document <laughs> last week for us. Yeah, I have an apology to M. I didn't get my suggestions in until after Friday. Sorry about that. Yeah, because I was going to work on it over the weekend. And uh, yeah, so I, put I was going to have some time. The, the dog ate my homework. I put in a whole lot of uh, comments on my phone and then didn't send them, and I don't think they ever got in. Oops. All right. Well, we'll, we'll just carry it on over to next week. I'll take a look at it on Saturday. So, free. Or I can you, give you Friday? verbally right now. 
Uh, you can always type it up and send it over. Okay. So Thank that's you. a no to giving it to you verbally. That's correct. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Um, Well, I don't know why we can't work on it here and right now. Um, I, I presented the question, you know, what do we do next? And um, <laughs> it's, it's like the guy was taking a picture of us. No, no, no. My stuff is, I'm looking at it on the phone. My stuff is in there, Emiliana. Okay. Oh, are you the one who added that stuff at the bottom? Yep. I see. I'm anonymous. I'll put my name in. Okay, I'm working on it right now. She wants me to type, so. Okay. Yeah, so, um, All right. so we all seem to be in agreement. What are we all in agreement of? Um, that uh, we don't have a clear vision forward. And um, and that's probably hampering our, our difficulty in figuring out what to do next. Bill, uh, what would you like us to review? What's already in there? Is that what you mean? Yeah, and things that aren't in there. But the point of the doc is to do what? Add to it? I, or wait, to review. I mean, I don't like doing too much offline. That's not my preference in general but we can I think try. the doc is to help us establish what we're aiming for yeah so we get to talk about it at some point I've just not, I don't know what the what the end point of the, what the next step is when do we actually interact with the doc besides just signing edits I guess you know is there we a gonna, can, all, you, can you provide your input first and then yeah, I'm just gonna I'm sorry it. I can't I can't access because I have a bunch of bad computers, so I cannot access it easily. I'll, I'll get there. I'm jumping around computers like crazy. I'll get there. All right, so what, why I, don't you just send me an email with your input and I'll throw it in there. Okay. Is but, that, no, is that... No, I have, I have yeah. to see. I have to see what's there. I can't. Yeah, yeah. what? So I asked David to copy paste the text and send it to me so I can contribute somehow. <laughs> so you can't you can't access it access it from your phone? I don't use or Google on my phone. No, no way. All right. It's yeah, pointless, so right? Why would I want to run, you know, Google Docs on my tiny screen to begin with? So yeah. Yeah, so he does not he does not put Google I've stuff. done it. Who would do that? Who would do that? I mean right? only, I didn't only, move. only I... thick headed morons. That's my bald, opinion. Bald thick headed morons. There's this new <laughs> device called the laptop Laptop, Ted, you might want to try a laptop with a real keyboard. Or That's an it. iPad. Yeah. Bill, you could just buy an iPad. Yeah, I could just buy a new MacBook too, right? Sure. Here's okay. my money wand. Wave, 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 and have a yacht. There we go. <laughs> All right, so... Um, my daughter just bought a new MacBook. I'm so jealous because her MacBook also died. So we're 0 for 2 with MacBooks. Not a very good ad there, Bill. Um, yeah. I think, um, would it be good, M? Um, I know your preference would be to get everything in textual form and then have a chance to edit it together. Mm -hmm. And then we would all have something to focus our conversation. But I wonder if, um, would you be open to going through some of the values and finding out if there are any values that we came up with that everyone doesn't agree to? I suspect that we're going to pretty much agree on most of those, but would like to check and make sure. All right. I'm open on values. I'm look I, I have the split screen, so I'm looking at the document. Shall I bring up the document? Um, that would be nice. Yes. 
then we can uh, I can share my screen unless Emiliana wants to share her screen. Uh, can I great. share my screen? Okay. Yeah. Um, can I? Oh, here we go. Share screen, screen, screen. Zoom. Okay, can you see it? Yes, we can. Oh, you're sharing your screen on an iPhone. Wow, okay, great. No, I'm, I'm doing it on an iPad. Oh, mm. on an iPad. oh, okay, great. All right, so can everybody see? I can see the live document on my phone. For some reason, Zoom won't uh, take away the initial video preview <laughs> from my screen, so I'm, oh, I'm stuck mm. looking at myself, but um, I can see the document on my phone as it gets. I see it on my computer. I can All see right. your screen. All right. Are you good, Bill? Can you see it? Put a thumbs up if you can. We'll just assume if you, Bill doesn't say, okay. Here we yeah, go. so I can see it. We're good. Thank you. Okay. So we want to do values. I uh, actually, uh, can we, it looks like you had some like filler text in there. One of which was yeah. like, a, I think an Up incomplete, here? well, each of the three sections. Scroll oh down. yeah, those are, so like I had, as I had explained it, it was just uh, some notes from what I could glean last time, just a little bit here and there. Right, and um, the second, okay, so it's the same in all three, mission, vision, and values. Oh, whoa, 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 oh, thank you for pointing that out. Let me grab... Uh, <laughs> Naya, come on! Uh, let's Jim see. Acosta. Yeah, he had a few things to say. Um, biblical. Where did I? Where did I? Oh, I. Oh, wait. I think I. Da, 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 da. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, sure did. All right. Hey. Deleted note. Cancel. Recover. All right. Da, 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 da. Copy. Wait, what was that? That was the mission. Paste. Oh. Okay, and vision. Okay. Oops, nope. Ah, sorry. <laughs> okay, over here. There we go. What was that again? Mission, vision, values. Everyone should be so nice to their vision. God, please paste. To love each other and the world more like, is that? Okay. Vision, yep. Okay. Okay. Does that look about right? Better? Go to town, y'all. Uh, thank you. Um, this this second line um, <clears throat> that I have highlighted there, uh, Christian values you. I'm not sure what this this line means. Oh, hold on. Let me. Um... Oh, it's, a, it's, uh, it's a partial note. It's not complete. I, I, sorry. My bad. Embody Christian values. I probably should take out the that part. Oh, okay. Well, it feels like the values you were actually um, uh, sort of saying you were taking stuff that I said. And so uh, maybe my takes on them are a little bit more full. Feel free. Go right on ahead. So I'm going to just I was suggest... just taking scant notes. All right. If you go into the document, more than one person can edit it at the same time. He is. I think. Oh, yes. he is? Okay. Yeah. Yes, I've been 
Uh, no, Emiliana has these really great magical editing powers that right? even a, a keyboard doesn't even show up and she's just like modifying stuff. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's the Holy it's Spirit. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you for doing thank you for doing this, Emiliana. Good start. Appreciate it. All right. So why don't we just start with the mission then? Let's just talk about the mission a little. So what is the great reset? Leadership development? Uh, uh, change the world? Try to change the world is almost too much. But yes, I understand the goal. But yeah, I, lead, is we, it we leadership need to, development? We're not doing the great reset. The great reset is dead. So, okay. it, you know. So whatever this is. We is have to decide what we're going to call this. So. Oh, okay. I mean, you guys can all decide you want to call it the Great Reset, and then we fight over who has ownership of that title. But uh, <laughs> can we can we do like, like a thing it. where we just call it TGR and we just leave it ambiguous? What that stands for? Like maybe it's the Greater Reset, the Good Reset, Ted's Gospel Rowdies. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. All right, I'm in. <laughs> okay. <sighs> So what is what do we want to do? Or maybe we should do the vision first and then no, it's really one in front of the other. So what is what do we want to do? What are you guys passionate about? You know what I'm passionate about. <laughs> what do you want to do, Emiliana? I want I want to reconcile the church. Um uh, to the world. In other words, for God so loved the world, right? And so the church needs to reconcile itself with the world. It needs to um, it needs to reclaim its original mission, which is to disciple uh, the lost, to spread the gospel of salvation. And right now the church is doing a really lousy job um, but perhaps maybe the definition of church needs to be ch needs to change because church isn't a mega church. It's not a small. It's not a. It, it's it's people, and so I feel like okay. Thank you for letting me say that out loud. So maybe yes, the church needs to reconcile itself with its people, and its people is everyone in the world, because we're supposed to love like Jesus, walk like Jesus did jesus and god the lord loved the world so i feel like the church needs to reset itself to reestablish itself based on the great commission and remember our values and that is jesus valued people above all else um jesus didn't come in and 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 uh jesus did not show up to uh, have a revolution or he did show up for a revolution but the revolution was in our heart it's a revolution of our heart a revolution of, not, uh, of thinking I hope that makes I really sense. like what you're saying who's typing is that Emiliana or is that David I think that's it's David the it's, it's the Holy Spirit Woo! I think <laughs> we should, I think we David. should have certain band rules Band words like I think we need to I think we need to like I really like what you're saying Emiliana but yeah. um revolution might be a bit much no I I don't well maybe I I like revolution I'm a revolutionary um but um church is a big question mark and also yeah. I think we need to try to get beyond what we see other people failing at yeah and or maybe what am I passionate things... about doing? 
Um, so I, I agree with Emiliana that we should probably talk the, the mission or the, the target, the goal before we can talk vision, but, um, perhaps it would be better to confirm values before we talk about mission. Okay. Well, um, I think you should say, okay. Cause that, that's, I would like you, you to up. say reconciling the followers of Christ or reconciling the church with the world or loving the world. That was the heart of what Emiliana said. So yes. resetting the church, reconciling it with God does not capture what it only captures one aspect of what she said. Yeah, what um, she said reminds me of um, the church being a kingdom of priests. Priests are intercessors. Uh, to reconcile people with God and the church should be that for the world. Say that again, please. A kingdom of priests, um, reconciling priests or intercessors, reconciling people with God and the church should be reconciling the world with God. Who cut off, who who deleted what David Johnson wrote? David did. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. Because, because he did a bad job. That's okay. He didn't do a bad job. I was just, I said, well, let no, me just no, get my thoughts out. Okay. Well, I was, I was, I, I no, I, I did a bad job. It's fine. You're, you're writing your own words. It's better than me doing yes. it. I was only trying uh, to help you because you're on an iPad. That's all. That's okay. Ugh, so you actually do have a keyboard, though, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, I didn't uh, realize that. You want me to fix it? No, can we have body, body, body? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Normal. Okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> I can't get the... Is, mm, there we go. Reclaiming church's role. Reclaiming church role with the world. Should be reconciling with God. Great commission. Yeah, thank you. Talk, grow, lead, be responsible. Hmm. I don't know if I want our mission to be talking, but. So, what are our values? Right, so I, I just suggested instead of going for mission, um, we, we talk about values instead. Um, and, and that can probably help guide us with the mission because already, like when we were talking mission, like Ted was bringing up values. Yeah. So that seems like a better place to start. I, and I think Bill said something along this previously last week. Okay. Maybe M could, uh, help me with that sentence there. I used the word living twice in the same sentence <laughs> where are you uh, 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 values where? values accountable to each other for living out other, humble living out and humble obedient and living in the light of his word <laughs> that's not a good sentence at all yeah should humbly and obediently become adverbs for the word living Rather than wordsmith, what I would like to recommend, if you guys, rather than trying to wordsmith it right here, we try to get the concepts out there. Yeah. Um, well, even so if they're in guys... broad strokes and too many words, and then because Emiliana can wordsmith it on her own without a whole bunch of micromanagers. Um, so I feel like uh, in our group, the, the Bible should be non-negotiable. And that we help each other be held accountable to what it says to us. Um, that's what I was trying to capture there. That um, how we treat each other in the group and then how we each live outside the group um, should 
we should be accountable to each other to make sure that we're accurately uh, showing God's love to the world by how we live and by how we treat each other. Oh, what happened to my bottle? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was my bad. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. There you go. Um, I, I would like, uh, Val, I think we should also, um, all right, I'm going to throw this one in. Da, 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 da. Bible is non-negotiable. We value the, the uh, prophetic. One. So if somebody um, is a non-charismatic, are they not welcome? Mm, of course they're welcome, but we value the prophetic. For example, I have a friend, of, a good friend of mine. He's, he's been a believer forever, but he doesn't, he, he, he has, he has some of the, some of the, uh, the uh, gifts, but not all of them. Uh, he can see in the spirit, but he can't, uh, but he doesn't have a prayer language. He doesn't speak in tongues. I mean, it's whatever, however the Lord works, but I don't want to devalue the prophetic. I want it to be, you know, those were gifts. Those were weapons of Jesus. I got to be very careful. Those are in addendum to the armor of God. Does that make sense? They're, they're comp, they, the prophetic is, is a part of the kingdom. And so I don't want that to be devalued. I want it to be um, valued. Does that make sense? No, yeah, I understand what you're coming, where you're coming from, yeah. Okay. Um, values, oh. Oh, we is uh, realize we are human subject to fallibility therefore forgiveness and reconciliation excuse me Forgiveness and reconciliation is our what? Clearing call? I don't know. I gotta think about this. Is our is or M O realize you're human. Subject to fallibility for repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation is uh 
Oh, here we go. Values. Oh, really? Listen here. Yeah, I'll there you go. Oh, you got it. I got it. All right. Let me throw this cursor over here. Oh, there was something else. What is it? Do you have any input, Bill? Well, they're typing. I figure we might fill the dead space in the air. <laughs> We're talking. Maybe Eric and I'll talk while David and Emiliano are typing. Um, so, Ted. Yes, sir. Did you, have, did you have a good week? Uh, last week yeah yeah pretty good had a pretty exciting day today too was all of that excitement had in zoom calls <laughs> not all of it but yeah i was very much in zoom calls today yeah nice thanks for the introduction to melody I'll uh, try to follow that up. This last week before we depart is a bit of a scramble. So I might be uh, able to develop better routines after we're over there um, and not trying to pack up house and leave. Uh, one thing I think would be cool, I'm just suggesting it, I don't mind putting this in whatever language speaks to us right now, but I think I would like to be able to articulate this in religion, in language that's not religious language. You know, that's not just jargon for those who are part of our Christian community. So in other words, no Christianese, please, right? Yeah. What would you use for the church, Ted? Um, so that it doesn't assume too much. Well, for that one, I would say we love people. That's exactly what I was going to write. <laughs> like just, just, I just, period. We just love people. Christ is our standard, I suppose. I mean, uh, to me, I think we, you know, a lot of, a lot of, there's two different things going on. One is, as you start out, you put things down in a whole lot of words and then you, you, you tighten them up. So one, we've got to tighten them down to just less words. And then, you know. Yep. Yeah, I usually err on the side of too much and then I start slicing and dicing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's how you write. You write and you have a big long thing and then you, you know, you, you, you. Uh, Hemingway, me, Hemingway I, I, said I, I, he was a horrible writer, but he was a decent editor. <laughs> exactly. That word went a little too far to say all people. I'm okay with saying, um, you know, followers of Jesus. I don't think that's Christianese per se. But, you know, to the extent we're trying to reconcile with the word, with the world, what are you talking don't about? use any Christianese. Don't, um, we change church to people. I think we lost something there. Oh, so you're, think, okay. I mean, so I said we love well, people as Christ so loved the world. I thought we were saying we want to change the word church to something. We did. You changed it to people? 
We just took we it love, out of that place. Yeah, it's verbose. I mean, or repetitive. We me, love me, people me, as Christ so loved the world. You were going to say something, Bill? It's okay. I, I have to actually read, not just listen. Uh, so, Ted, I, I took everything that you had, and I, I split it up between the three different sections as best as I could. Okay. So I'm, I'm still going back to that no Christianese idea. I think we can let Milan do that. Um, I think the sensible second principle I'd like is no ambiguous statements. So like we love people to me is, I mean, you could say as Christ loved the world, but I mean, I'm, I want to get something that I'm not going to get from a Sunday morning church mission statement. So I want to get some more meat on it. And I think it's a mistake for us to assume we all mean the same thing as to how Christ loved the world. We need to dig into that. No, no, I, I, I agree with that too. Yes. Like we love people. Like, what are we really saying by that? What do we mean by that? Yeah. You know, right. what so that, that, how is that, you know, how does that govern our activities? Um, right. And so I'm not earning his, his docs, but say docs, his agendas tended to be like pretty, I could interpret it 20 different ways at least. And so I'd be content to take even one of these and say, that's our mission to drill down on one of these. I can't drill down on 20, just telling you in advance. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think, I mean, when you write a mission statement, again, you put a whole bunch of stuff out there and then you drill down as to what, what you know, what, what really... What really do you want to say? What really do you value? What do you mean by those words? Yeah, maybe we could do really concise statements with um, extensive footnotes or something like that. Yeah, or we start out with... with expansive statements as we're trying to get it all out there and then we narrow it down to things that are tight and concise then you know either way or the other way around have a tight concise statement and then broaden it if we feel like we have all the spare time in the world <clears throat> let's give some examples Yeah. Ah, uh, no, goodness. Really? <laughs> right, right here, right, right here. Ah, <laughs> close. All right. There you go. Maybe we'll see from God's word. All right, so let's get our Bible. And one more, my third principle is, um, I think it's more efficient to reference something that is existing because Jesus himself did that. He didn't just come in and say, hey, here's something brand new. You've never heard any of it. And he, and he sort of said, well, okay, I see where you guys are now. And I want to extend it in the following ways. It's like when Emilio says, the church is doing a terrible job. You can't just say that. You have to say how to make it better. <laughs> you have to identify a problem. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of a nasty claim. So you have to say, okay, what we see on TV Sunday morning 
good in this way, lacking in these ways, and we're gonna, you know, go after these these things that we think are incorrect. We're gonna to emphasize those. So you have to. I think it's just more efficient to point to something existing, either the current church or the church two thousand years ago. It's just more efficient to start with something. Yeah, I think um, to me, the great reset gives the idea of just going back to the basic bios and, um, you know, would that be the church in Acts for you, Bill? Are you safe um, um, starting there? I've been trying to do that for 30 years. I think um, I hinted at this last week in a joking way. Um, Jesus didn't use Google Docs for the disciples. It's 2021. The world's very well connected. We have Eric going to Thailand. It's a different world. And so what are we going to do about it? I don't think we want to bring, drag all of society back to 2,000 years ago. You know, again, back then, you lived with your family. You worked with your family. In this world, we drive away the average person now spends three hours a week not in front of a screen so we have and to, that's for sleeping yeah <laughs> not including sleep when they're awake right so that's three hours a week to interact with people face to face and dropping and but no i think there's there's been way too many attempts to just go back to acts two but there's, there's certainly principles in act two that we can bring in but I, I, so I, I think I made a mistake there. So I said, first principle, don't use Christian yeast. And then I'm saying, uh, start with a church or start with, you know, some religious model. No, maybe we should start with, I mean, my hope was be in Silicon Valley, start with the prevailing Silicon Valley model of what salvation is. And it's typically, I'm going to ignore my friends and family. I'm going to work a thousand hours a week and do an IPO. And then I've made it. So if you want to connect with the world, connect with, as Paul did, he said, Oh, Caesar, looks like Rome is really powerful. Let's discuss. And but Caesar's not with us right now. It's other global things that attract people's attention. So I hate to say, most people think the church is irrelevant. Most people think whatever you have in America, whatever country, is like a million times better than what you saw in Acts 2, 2,000 years ago. And so we have to be like Jesus in 2021 20, 20, and say, mm, some good stuff, but all this, you know, you're just sitting eight hours a night playing violent video games. You know, we, we have to speak and be specific. You think people would um, assume that their interpersonal relationships are far better now than what people had in simpler times? Um, that's a good question. Some yes, some no. <clears throat> well, um, supposedly an epidemic of, of loneliness, if you read all the big news headlines, the British Health Service has launched a attack for to address the epidemic of loneliness so, I mean, some people think they get high quality interaction playing World of Warcraft, and I don't think Jesus would agree with that. Yeah, I think um, most people you would talk to long for something better in their interpersonal relationships than what they're experiencing right now. Sometimes you'll leave it outside and hear the barbecue bit, the barbecue thing. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I think I've worked with that avenue, and that's why I work for the homeless. And I think that that can work really well. And I think Jesus also spoke to that. And uh, how do you think the Samaritan woman at the well's interpersonal relationships were doing that day? <laughs> She's dying to have a human even look at her. All right. So, um, I'm just kind of, this is really hitting me personally. And that is, I have an intimacy deficit. In other words, 
when I try to connect and be intimate with people, it usually just dies at some point. And so how do you guys, I mean, I, I just, I, I feel like it's important for us to be intimate. And so I kind of added that up here um, because Christ bit, went to Mary's house. Christ went to somebody else's house. He was house hopping, you know, um, yeah. people were hosting him and he was intimate with them in face to face. I mean, uh, granted we're on a, on a uh, Zoom uh, because cir circumstances, that's the way it is. But I feel like there's this, we need to stress the intimacy that we would feel so safe with each other that, that we would really begin to see the kingdom of God among us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking you up until the point of safe. I think Jesus' versions of intimacy was he saw, he saw your heart and he saw yeah. what you needed. And that wasn't always like, oh, it's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's like trying to have their heart aligned with his heart. And that's well, a very think, intimate thing. But by safe, I mean, uh, in other words, when I become vulnerable and it is clearly this is going to be an intimate moment, let's, let's just say, I want to be, I want to feel safe in that I know I'm not going to be yelled at. I'm not going to, yeah. be, I'm not going and, to be ridiculed. And Emiliana, I'll take a, uh, check me if I'm wrong, but um, do you also mean that the relationship is robust? So yes. even if there's a blow up or a misunderstanding that there can be, that it's normal to have reconciliation and to be restored to a state of grace in that relationship. Yeah. Um, so it's robust that in that regard. Be, that means uh, both people value the relationship enough to seek that restoration, realizing that, okay, there's a speed bump, slow down, you know, let's work through this, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like what happened between you and Janet was one of the best um, experiences of that that I've seen for a long time. But things like that, should be the norm if there's a blow up in anywhere in the group and the group should teach us all how to do that in our other interpersonal relationships and uh it's yeah i have another relationship uh where we had a blow up last year <laughs> literally it was uh when was it it was in october ish november yeah it was october actually and the other person uh, sought, uh, we, we tried to work it out and it blew up. Uh, it, it, less than 30 seconds, they're like, yeah, this phone call is over. <laughs> so we sought counsel with someone else. And I said, you know what? Um, I have, you know, given my PTSD, I know me. I know me a lot better than I did, say, 15 years ago. I need some time and space. I can't just instantly reconcile because... I know me. I I will I, I will say things that I regret, that are hurtful, because that was my that that's what was in me, and I don't want to repeat that mistake. And so, boy, this is going to be a ch this is going to challenge me something fierce. This this is going to be a challenge for me, because I know that I probably should re reconcile quickly, but for, I guess it's fear. A fear that I'm going to screw it up because you know I'm so good at that. Well, I think uh, with practice uh, we get better at things, and yeah. you know, there's no other way, really. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there will be tears, I suppose. <laughs> Another thing I never used to do in front of anybody. I was the ice queen and proud of it. I'm melting. Ha 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 ha. This is good stuff. The Holy Spirit empowers everyone. Through the Spirit, everyone has something positive to contribute, and so they should be heard. Uh, can I say one more thing about the recon reconciling idea? Yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah. I know some people, like I have a new friend, he's been trying to reconcile with his father for 25 years. So it's not that he would disagree with the goal, but he doesn't have 
the mind of Christ or a Christian approach to it. So it has to again be tied to Christ. It can't just be, you know, we, we just want people to reconcile with close friends. I mean, it's, that's, that's also an example of it's not clear. How would you do that? How would you approach it? There's plenty of worldly ways I know that this poor guy's been talking for 25 years. He's seen every therapist in, in the phone book. Yeah. And, but you know, there's, there's a way that Jesus would help two people reconcile, which has got to be a lot more powerful than the world's way. But you know what? The, the, per, the, the, uh, your friend, does he know the Lord? Um, he's an Orthodox Jew. He knows some, some version of it, yeah. And but, his, is his father practicing? Um, yeah, to some degree, yeah. But, but an Orthodox Jew and someone who knows, well, okay. Yeah, he knows the yeah. Old Testament front, front and back. Yeah. There's differences, supposedly. Uh, I, I, that's a tough one, diving into yeah. that, because, um, you know, reconciliation. No, no, he's, he's, he's open to Jesus. That's my point. That's what I imagine. Yeah, no, 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 no. And, <laughs> and, and it's tough, okay? I mean, it's, it's, it's tough either way. And again, we have to, like, because I can also share with you cases of people who are, Christians, you know, not just Orthodox Jews who are very open to Jesus, who are having a heck of a hard time learning to reconcile. I, you know, broken relationships are all over. And just saying we're committed to it and actually walking it out is a lot harder. Right. And so, like, I, I flatten the New Testament letters into one simple sentence. Come on, Jews, get along with Gentiles. You should be reconciled. <laughs> But Paul, Paul's letters all the time is, hey, you person A, reconcile with person B. At the end of all his letters, there's this massive list of calls to reconcile. So even, mm. even people that were you know, back then in that time, very close to Christ, had not maybe learned how to do this. <clears throat> I think yeah, that, no, that's a big, there's a big. Uh, or, or the biggest one is Philemon, right? Philemon and his master. And it's like. That's what N.T. Wright says. That's the most important book of the entire Bible is a slave and their master reconcile around Christ. Imagine the power of that. Mm. And then Philemon goes on to become a bishop, a very prominent bishop. I didn't know that. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, you look at Philemon, Philemon, I guess. I always heard it say Philemon, but uh, <laughs> um, tomato, tomato. Uh, yeah, um, no, the early church and, you know, masters and servants being together, you know, that's one example of it. Um, you know, that, that was one of the distinctives that made them stick out, like, you know, we're, we're Jews and Gentiles, the way men and women treated each other, the way, you know, the, 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 the role of women in the church, um, we, don't, we don't realize how radical that was and I'm, I'm i'm talking about you know paul's teaching on women you know and and the fact that you had lydia priscilla and aquila and on all these other you know not to mention the woman at the well um um and the way both jesus treated the outsiders and then the way the early church interacted together across all these huge divisions, which did not normally like each other or interact or have anything to do with each other, really stood out um, yeah, and in I mean, a very to be positive clear, way. And having be, said that, they also had big problems. You know, there, it was tough. I mean, Paul is Paul's continually fighting and being persecuted by the Judaizers who were followers of Jesus. Yeah, but he didn't stop, that's the point. And he made progress. I mean, to be clear, the cross, Ephesians, it's very clear what the work of the cross accomplished. It's to break down the barriers of hostility. Guess who created those barriers of hostility? But not just those you mentioned. Any and all man-made barriers of hostility, the cross was, the work of the cross was to, to, to break down those barriers. So, the Bill, do record. you have, my, my question is. Cap, reconciliation with a capital R, cross size R. Yeah. <clears throat> do you have... Um, where have you seen that reconciliation take place and what 
you know. That's the examples that we're talking about, right? No, I mean, like you um, yeah, shared one modern example of a friend of yours who's a negative example. You know, he's a right. Jew and he's been trying and, to reconcile with his father. I mean, pick, pick, I mean, that, that, that story has been repeated over and over. Um, do you have a positive uh, example? I was arguing for examples. If I can give the ones in the headlines, like in the Middle East, Palestinians and Jews doing joint stuff together on the border, but I don't know that firsthand. And then locally, I'm trying to think, like I'm saying, you know, the, the dominant culture here is high tech, high tech, high tech. Steve Jobs is our high priest. And has there been a reconciliation that I've seen firsthand with someone saying, well, it's not working for me. Maybe I'm a little bit too selfish. I want to think differently <laughs> to use Apple's phrase. Yeah, I think there's plenty of local examples, firsthand things. I'll go back to Janet Emiliano, right? We all saw that one. Yeah, I think. Um, oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Apologize. <clears throat> you know, um, a lot of what took place there with Janet and Emiliana is um, strongly biblical, um, and it bears fruit. And so, and that's fruit that usually doesn't happen in the world. Um, it's one of the gifts that believers need to be bringing into the world. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to, um, you know, just somehow have a group where that is the norm. It's expected that that happens if there's ever a misunderstanding or a blow up. Um, and that ro relationships are robust. They aren't fragile and brittle, where if there's uh, hurt feelings or something that it's over, you know. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um with all that and the relationships need to be front and center, but there's something else I'm thinking of is how do we, Lisa, how do we put as one of our values, humility? You know, I, I was awarded the, the I, I, I won the, the medal for being the most humble man in Silicon Valley, but then they took it away because I wore it. <laughs> it was a test <laughs> they did that on no purpose. i mean it, i mean i'm using that joke to make a point how do you how do we phrase this in a word that isn't just a ah, you know humble everybody wants to be humble what does that actually mean what does it mean yes what does it mean to us <laughs> uh, i thought you were making a joke about it being silicon valley and the bar being just that low <laughs> well so at the last supper Jesus set this example, you know, there was a dirty job nobody wanted to do and hadn't done. And he just up and did it for everybody. Um, and I think that's what it means. Uh, it means the dirty or inconvenient or difficult things that are needed, um, that we're eager to jump in and do those things for the good of others. Yeah, I think the, Ted, I think the, do you Ted, want to speak, I was ask you, where are you coming with, from with this humility focus? What's the issue, the challenge, the problem? Oh, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm reflecting, it seems like one of the things we've done, speaking of the Great Reset, is talk like we're authorities in a whole bunch of areas. And I don't think we've actually jumped in the game, gotten our hands dirty and know what it takes you know um and how hard it really is you know um it's one thing to say and i and so i'm saying how do we grow in that area <laughs> i guess i think I, heard, I think i heard something different there so i try not to act like an authority i don't think anyone listening would say wow bill's just an amazing authority but i hear you saying we need to jump in and and actually do some things. So that's a little bit different than humility. Right. That's saying um, we need, like, 
in our document it says we have to actually have an impact or we actually have to <laughs> have to go to yeah, the well. Yeah, and I was specifically talking about, yeah, no, we have to actually have an impact, but, um, you know. We have to go yeah. to the well. We have to go to the places where the outcasts are. And, yeah. Yeah. And Bill, um, you remember back to the time we were discussing that passage about Peter being reinstated by the Lord. And um, my big takeaway from that was to love people in a non-directive way. So part of humility is doing things for others rather than telling them to do stuff or trying to influence them and thinking that's love. That could be one type of love, but the more important type is actually doing stuff for them, I think. You mean being of service? Yeah, serving people okay. like Jesus did when he washed their feet oh, at the night. But not in the codependent way. In other words, we're not doing for them what they could do for themselves. Maybe you do um, once or twice. Um, Peter right. could have washed his own feet. No, that's true. But <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't mean, mean it like that. But I mean, you know. If, uh, yeah, there's no, tons no. of people that could be taking care of themselves better, but it doesn't really help them uh, to just point a finger and tell them it's their fault. You know, I think it means do whatever it takes to actually help people, to actually serve people. Yeah, you know, I, I don't like the idea of saying one type of love is better than another type. Um, and and I can actually think of people in instances in which pointing a finger at them actually did them a lot of good and they were very grateful that that happened. Yeah. So I think it, it depends on the person, it depends on the circumstances. Yeah, it's what it calls for at the time. Well, I mean, I haven't seen very many examples where people have pointed the finger at people out, without love that it's done much good. Right. Right. But the idea that you can do these things with love. Of course. Of course. Love, love requires you in many situations to take a risk and to, you know, be, be willing to say things that are uncomfortable mm -hmm. and face rejection because you value the person more than you value what you get out of it, you know? Yeah. I think, and again, first Corinthians 13 is very clear. Every single thing has to be coming from love. Not like once in a while I'll, I'll love someone. Every single interaction with a person has to be coming from love. Every single interaction. No. There's not a teaching time, a testing time, a stern time. No, there's just love that person time nonstop. God so loved the world, right? Not no. Sunday morning for an hour. It's 24 7. I, I like Eric's, Eric's point there is, is, is um, there's many different ways to love someone. And some might be more effective than others and some might not qualify as love <laughs> and it's all contextual you know it's like I I, I I definitely agree with you David I mean I I you know talk to some like some of my spiritual mothers you know the, the I'm thinking of one in particular who lives in San Francisco and I hear some of the things she says to people <laughs> and I'm like, I, and right. I picture myself saying that and it just, you know, I'd get slapped or whatever. And, and, and the incredibly positive results. And I realize it's who she is and the love that just, she just emanates that she'll just see some, you know, it, she, she, she there, there, there's so much love and such authority because of that, you know, but she's saying stuff that's, pretty direct and offensive <laughs> yeah, there, there's there's two challenges to that is a you have to make sure you're saying that from love and then here's the harder piece what is the other person going to hear so that's where we get in trouble right it's like i was saying something for your benefit let's say right but the other the, that person heard you're criticizing me, you think I'm worthless, you think I'm terrible. So that's the hard part, is you're not talking to yourself. <laughs> so, you know, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you speak to 
How do you speak truth in love? To, to you don't me, there's speak. one. Yeah. There's a back and yeah. forth, right? There, you've got to have this interaction going. That's why I was saying last week, the emotionally safe space. So it has to be what you said there, Bill, didn't sit right with me. What did you mean? And there has to be this back and forth discussion. I'm not a mind reader like Jesus. That's the problem with Jesus as an example. He can read minds, read hearts. I can't do that on a good day. Yeah, that's not my gift. <laughs> yeah. But I can listen. I can hear someone saying, wow, that hurt. Ted, you're crazy saying that to me right now. What are you doing? And you know, there's a, then there's the discussion. Um, so I attempted to define humility. Anybody want to, it's the directly underneath the word values. Thank you. Yeah, I, how would you like to add this, Emiliana? Um, yeah. To serve others according to what they need, uh, not according to what I think. Or yeah, just to to serve others according to their needs. You know, I think um, an element of humility is being willing to adapt yourself to others rather than expecting them to adapt themselves to you. And so, that, fit yourself to the to the situation to that person. Yeah, um, make it convenient for them rather than convenient for yourself, or make it what they need. Does that resonate with the other guys? I like the uh, adapt to others. So for example, in the case of children, when you're talking to a child, there's, they're petrified when you're standing and towering above them. But when you sit down and you look at them face to face, you're not so intimidating, right? Yeah, that's a good example. So that, yeah, so that, I think that's an example of adapting. <clears throat> Let me go back. Ah, uh, 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 mm, stop it. Love. Okay, I'll, I'll do my mini sermon on grace, sermonette on grace here because it ah. pertains. I'll also type it in, but um, it took me a long time to get a good definition of grace. And most Christians will say grace is, oh, God was nice. He didn't punish you when you deserve to be punished. It's God's think, riches at Christ's expense. Yeah, maybe. Or it's like, God gives you something you didn't deserve. Like he was extra nice. He gave you this gift you didn't deserve. Yeah, maybe. And one sounds like mercy that he held back punishment. One sounds like kindness and loving. He gave you something you don't deserve. But the best definition of a grace I had was exactly what we're talking about. Is grace is a relationship between God and you. And he will interact with you and do whatever it takes to move you to a better place. It might be punishment. It might be a loving gift. It might be washing feet. It might be teaching to wash your own feet. But the goal is, I'm going to move that person to a better place. So if you're a parent, you know this. Sometimes you give them great gifts. Sometimes you deny privileges. So grace is this attitude that I have that person's best interest in mind. And I'm always going to be moving them to a better place. But grace is a pretty complex concept because it's a relationship with a goal. How do you know what's a better place, Bill? Um, we're all to grow to the mind of Christ, right? We're all to be Christ-like. Okay, yeah, to be closer and closer to Christ. Yeah, not not, not a Silicon Valley better place. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, down. It's God's version better. Yeah. And to do that, 
the only way I know how to do is to ask God, what do I do now? Do I punish? Do I lavish with love? I don't necessarily know what this person needs right now. And I don't even know what the better place is, but God, tell me what to do here now. <clears throat> Yeah, really is it really? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to jump in. For, I have to jump in four minutes, so I should probably jump right now. It's two twenty six. Yep. I think this has actually been productive, guys. Um, Me too. I, I, um, you're well surprised. on your way, Emiliana, to getting yeah. this down on paper. Yep. So now I can. I'll I'll mess with it uh, this week. Yeah, what do you guys want to do next? I mean, this has been two weeks. Do you want to share this with everyone else and let whosoever chime in on it? Do you want to make it more complete before we share it with others? Um, That's a good question. Um, a bit of both. Maybe polish a little bit, then share within seven, seven days. Okay, so uh, maybe Emiliana touches it up and then Make it look pretty. <laughs> we all get uh, one last polish on it via the Google Doc and then it becomes public uh, next week on the call. Yeah, or public I think it'd be consumption. Yeah. And, and just make sure we very carefully disclaim it. We're not saying we're done. In particular, there's a lot of- It's a living document. Big things here that we said we would drill down on, so not just to get another generic church mission statement, and we want their help and all that good stuff. Yeah. And how you present it is going to be really important how it's received. Okay, I'll, I'll put a little thing on the top. This is a living document. Yeah, with the following deficiencies. Work in progress. We, yeah, and we can even list <laughs> the deficiencies that we think are there. And, yeah. and also, mission, vision, values. Okay. In this case, we should. What do we trend. actually want to do? I mean, this is good, but what do we actually want to do with this? I want to know what do you want to do with this? Like, Bill, what do you want to do in. Like, you tell me where I want to know where you want to be. Do you want to say, you know, I want to have something that empowers me to go help my friend who you mentioned to be reconciled? Because I believe, you know, there's more power to the gospel than I have yet. Or what? You know, where, where do you guys want to be in I think I'll, it's I'll, one I'll year, ideas. two years, I'll three type, years? I'll type some ideas, but I'm thinking more of a, a shared project. I'm still not buying into much to we just come together to share struggles and then we go off in separate projects. It's like Ted says, Ted doesn't need another Bible study. I don't need another group where I just come in and talk about what I'm doing and hear a bunch of other people say what they're doing and we go off parts separate ways. I'm looking for a joint project. You know, I, I'll use the word parachurch more than church. <clears throat> I don't like parachurch outside the church, but oh well, it's just a term. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind the concept <laughs> of um, what you, you mean. I hate the term it, outside oh, the church. <laughs> I have a request. Yeah, so, um, Emiliana's um, stewarding a definitions document. And I wonder, Ted, if you could um, start another one, put your question at the top, and then we all, you know, put a oh, that's good. blob in there that, that says what we feel that's good. that we need from the group, our purpose that's good. for the group. Very good. I okay. need lunch. <laughs> all right. God bless, okay. guys. Peace, right. y'all. Peace out. Bye, y'all. Blessings. Bye. Thanks. See y'all. Bye-bye. Sweet glasses. I want you to wear those next time. Come on. I want the Blues Brother glasses. That's what I want out of this group. Me too. I'll bring it.